Hello my medical coders. In today's video we'll continue the ICD 10 CM chapter specific coding guidelines. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide. Hello medical coders. In today's video we'll be seeing the ICD 10 CM chapter specific guidelines. If you're new to this channel, I am Surya Johnson. I am a medical coding professional. I have around 14 years of experience in medical coding and in this channel I teach everything under the medical coding world all about the medical coding guidelines, exams, how to crack the exam, tips, tricks, and how to appear for an interview. And all the questions that you ask in this medical coding field, I'm here to help you out. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you'll not miss any of my future medical coding related videos. Let's get started. In my channel, I've already posted an ICD 10 CM playlist. I'll put it in the description box below so you can go and watch. In that video, we've already posted about the general coding guidelines and also I've started the chapter specific coding guidelines. In this ICD chapter specific coding guidelines, I've already covered till chapter 9. If you haven't watched that, please go and watch all those chapters, especially the conventions, general coding guidelines, because based on that only, you'll understand the chapter specific coding guidelines in ICD 10 CM. So I've already covered nine chapter specific coding guidelines in ICD 10 CM. If you haven't watched that, please go and watch those things. So it'll be very much helpful to you. And in today's video, we'll be covering chapter 10 diseases of the respiratory system. That is J00 to J99 series and also U07.0. So respiratory system, if you already know, respiratory system starts from the nose and ends in the lung. Okay. So you should have an idea about the anatomy of a system before you're learning everything. So even this applies to the CPT guidelines as well as the ICD-10 CM guidelines. So all the medical coders should be aware of the basic anatomy and pathophysiology. All these things should be understood, should be known to a medical coder. Because if you have an idea about the case, about the anatomy, about the pathophysiology, I've already posted videos on the anatomy based on prefix, suffix and root words. You can watch those videos as well. I'll put a link in the description box below because all coders should know the basic anatomy. And if you want to know in depth aspect of a medical coder, what at all you should learn in the anatomical part, you can email me. I have a hundred plus pages of PDF dedicated completely for the anatomy and pathophysiology with all the medical terminologies, with all beautiful pictures and uh, the disease condition and common disease conditions occurs in each anatomical structures. So if you want this PDF, you can very well email me or Instagram me. I'll give the details. So let's get into the guideline. In this, we have the first point A, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is also called a COPD and asthma. So what is COPD? It's a common lung disease. It restricts the airflow and causes breathing difficulty. So there is a restriction in the airflow to the lung which ultimately results in breathing difficulty so this is a chronic condition in this we have the first point under this acute exacerbation of chronic obstructive bronchitis and asthma so what is exacerbation exacerbation means worsening of the condition it is the condition already has the patient is having the disease or condition but at particular time this condition this disease worsens it will be very severe and the patient will suffer a lot. So that time it is called as exacerbation. So the codes and categories J44 and J45 distinguish between uncomplicated cases and those in acute exacerbation. So I've got as uncomplicated cases, the patient is having the condition, but the patient condition is not complicated. The patient is not having any acute reaction. It is not affecting the status of the patient. So that is called as uncomplicated case. In the other case, and those in acute exacerbation, also I already explained what is exacerbation. So an acute exacerbation is a worsening or a decompensation of a chronic condition. An acute exacerbation is not equal to an infection superimposed on chronic condition. What does that mean? So an acute exacerbation might not be because of an infection. It's not compared like an infection, but sometimes it might be triggered by an infection as well. So when we are coding there is an option to code uncomplicated case and also there is a diagnosis to code acute exacerbation case so whenever you're choosing these diagnoses this you should be careful to read the documentation whether it is an acute exacerbation case the patient is suffering right now 
at the time of the visit there is an ex- exacerbation of the condition or the patient is not uh, exacerbated the patient is an uncomplicated case it's not at all complicated so you should undistinguish these two keywords in choosing acute exacerbation of chronic obstructive bronchitis and asthma key point here under chapter 10 is acute respiratory failure so what is acute respiratory failure so acute respiratory failure it happens very quickly without you know a um, warning or without any signs the patient should have been already having some disease conditions or an injury that affects the breathing and immediately what happens it builds up and results in acute res- respiratory failure sometimes acute respiratory failure can also develop slowly but that is a very rare scenario so under acute respiratory failure the first point is acute respiratory failure as principal diagnosis under acute respiratory failure there will be speaking only about the sequencing about the principal diagnosis about the secondary diagnosis so first point just tells you when you will code acute respiratory failure as a principal diagnosis because acute respiratory failure is will not occur as the initial condition there is already a disease involved or an injury occurred that resulted in acute respiratory failure we already saw about the acute respiratory failure description so that is why the confusion in whether it should be coded as a principal diagnosis whether it should be coded as a secondary diagnosis or what is what should be the sequencing of uh, acute respiratory failure when there is an another acute condition arises to clarify that they have brought up only three points under acute respiratory failure the first one states when the patient has been admitted for specifically for acute respiratory failure then you will be coding the acute respiratory failure this is the general coding guideline if you have already seen my previous video you should be knowing all this already if you have not seen that please go and watch the general coding guideline then only you will understand the chapter specific coding guidelines the reason for admission should be the principal diagnosis so the patient is already having some conditions or injury that resulted in acute respiratory failure somewhere else or outside the facility and the patient has been admitted to the facility for that acute respiratory failure then you'll be coding that as principal diagnosis so there specifically they mentioned there are some guidelines you should be looking into specific coding guidelines that is the obstetrics poisoning hiv newborn so in these scenarios and the patient is obstetrics that is pregnant patient has a poisoning patient has an hiv case patient has a non hiv case or patient has a newborn in this scenario you will not be coding acute respiratory failure as principal instead you will have that chapter specific guideline coding that code will be coded first so the second point is acute respiratory failure as secondary diagnosis so when you will be coding it as a secondary diagnosis because it is not the reason for admission the secondary respiratory failure may be listed as secondary diagnosis if it occurs after admission or if it is present on admission but does not meet the definition of principal diagnosis what does that mean it means there is some other condition that need that prioritizes the reason for admission like patient has some other disease or injury that is a major reason for the admission and later the patient after the admission or at the time of admission has a respiratory acute respiratory failure in this scenario you will not code this as principal diagnosis simple as that third point is sequencing of acute respiratory failure and another acute condition so when a patient is admitted with acute respiratory failure and another acute condition for example myocardial infarction cerebral vascular accident aspiration pneumonia in this scenario the principal diagnosis will not be the same in every situation that's what they're saying it differs so if the patient has been admitted with acute respiratory failure and also some other acute conditions for example i have mentioned some examples in this scenario there is no specific guidelines for which you should be coded but you can always prioritize based on the treatment plan if the treatment is solely focused on that new acute condition another acute condition then you'll be coding that as a principal diagnosis or if the treatment is solely uh, solely focused on acute respiratory failure you'll code acute respiratory failure there is no specific rules or specific guidelines to document which is principal diagnosis so if the documentation is not clear whether acute respiratory failure and other conditions are equally responsible for the admission then you have to query the provider for clarification so it should be documented like both the conditions are responsible for the admission then you can choose as per the treatment plan as per the severity as per the focus involved otherwise if it's not clearly explained then you can always query the provider for clarification the c point here is influenza due to certain identified influenza viruses so what is influenza influenza is commonly known as flu so flu 
or influenza contagious respiratory illness caused by influenza virus that infects the nose throat and also lungs so code only confirmed cases of influenza due to certain identified influenza viruses which falls under category J09 and due to other identified influenza virus category J10 J10 in this context confirmation does not require documentation of a positive lab testing specific for avian or other novel influenza A or other identified influenza virus however coding should be based on provided diagnostic statement that the patient has an avian influenza or other novel influenza A for category J09 or has another particular identified strain of influenza such as H1N1 or H3N2 but is identified as novel or variant for category J10 so what they saying is they should they need not be a documentation supporting a positive lab result for confirmation you don't have to focus on that if the doctor is already mentioned confirmed in the diagnostic statement the provider's diagnostic statement that the patient has this kind of influenza and based on what type of influenza he is mentioning avian influenza other novel influenza a you'll be choosing j09 or any other particular strain if the doctor is mentioning like h1n1 or h3n2 you'll be coding j10 series the if the provider stay records suspected or possible or probable avian influenza or novel influenza or other identified influenza then the appropriate influenza code from j11 influenza due to unidentified influenza virus should be assigned because the doctor is specifying the patient is having influenza but is not specifying or is suspecting or giving the probability or possibility of the type in this scenario you will be choosing influenza diagnosis but you will not give any specific identified influenza virus code so you will be choosing j11 which is influenza due to unidentified influenza virus which means the patient is having influenza but the confirmation on the type of the virus involved is not mentioned clearly so doctor has mentioned as suspected or possible or probable so whenever it is this one is not only applies to this uh, this chapter whenever in coding you are finding these words suspected possible probable it means the doctor is not sure it is not confirmed so you will not choose the form diagnosis so a code from category j09 influenza due to certain identified influenza virus should not be assigned nor a code from category j10 should not be assigned in this suspected possible probable scenarios you will be coding instead j11 which is influenza due to unidentified influenza virus next we'll move on to the d point d is ventilator associated pneumonia so the first point under ventilator associated pneumonia is documentation of ventilator associated pneumonia so what is pneumonia so pneumonia is an infection in the lungs caused by bacteria virus or fungi so it causes inflammation of the lung tissues and also can result in build up of fluid or pus in the lungs as with all procedural or post procedural complications code assignment is based on the provider's documentation of the relationship between the condition and the procedure so ventilator associated pneumonia in this scenario pneumonia is caused by the ventilator so what is ventilator associated pneumonia ventilator associated pneumonia means patient has been intubated and is receiving mechanical ventilation for more than 48 hours in those patients ventilator associated pneumonia occurs so the intubation is done and it's for more than 48 hours and because of that mechanical ventilation patient has developed this pneumonia that's why it is called as ventilator associated pneumonia for a procedure any complication or any condition is arises as per the general coding guidelines we will be assigning based on the provider's documentation relating that because of this only the patient has developed this complication in this scenario because of this ventilator only patient has developed pneumonia so the documentation should support the relationship between the condition and the procedure that is the patient has a pneumonia because of this procedure only so if it's been documented you'll be coding j95.851 ventilator associated pneumonia it should be assigned when the provider has documented this is a ventilator assigned associated pneumonia so you'll also be coding an additional code identifying the organism because we already saw pneumonia is can be caused by an infection by a bacteria a virus fungal anything so you'll be identifying the organism so to identify the organism you'll be adding an additional diagnosis code example in this case they have given b96.5 which is a pseudomonas aeruginosa so pseudomonas aeruginosa has caused this 
pneumonia because the patient has been on ventilation for a long time. So you'll be coding J95.85851 as a principal diagnosis, followed by additional code to identify the organism. So do not assign an additional code from categories J12 to J18 to identify the type of pneumonia. Code J95.851 that is the ventilator associated pneumonia should not be assigned for cases where the patient has pneumonia and is on a mechanical ventilator and the provider was not specifically stated that the pneumonia is ventilator associated pneumonia as we already seen in the beginning. There should be a relationship documented. The doctor should document this patient has developed pneumonia because of this ventilator. If it is not documented, you should not be coding J95.851. This always applies to all the medical coding guidelines. If it is not documented, it is not there. In case you have doubts, always query the provider, doctor for clarification. So the second point under this ventilator associated pneumonia is ventilator associated pneumonia develops after admission. So a patient may be admitted with one type of pneumonia in the beginning at the admission the patient has some type of already patient has a pneumonia example pneumonia due to streptococcus pneumonia J13 and after admitting to the hospital subsequently the patient develops ventilator associated pneumonia because after admission the patient has been uh, put on the ventilator and after some hours this ventilator also causes anemia. In this instance the principal diagnosis would be appropriate to quote from category J12 to J18 very good reason that is the reason for admission always have it in mind I'm repeat, I, I think I have repeated the same dialogue in this uh, video for four or five times because that is that much important if it is and the reason for admission is that diagnosis you should be coding that only the reason for admission should be the principal diagnosis so in this scenario the patient was admitted for some other type of pneumonia later after admission during the procedure after the procedure the patient developed a ventilator associated pneumonia so principal should be j12 to j18 and after that j95.851 you will be coding as a secondary or additional diagnosis so let's get into the e point vaping related disorder so what is vaping there's an electronic cigarette smoking they have specifically given a guideline for that. So for patients presenting with condition or conditions related to vaping, you'll be assigning code U07.0, vaping related disorder as principal diagnosis. So any conditions or any symptoms the patient has presented because of vaping, you'll be coding that as U07. For lung injury due to vaping, you'll be coding U07.0. So assign additional codes for for other manifestations such as acute respiratory failure, J96.0 series or pneumonitis. Associated respiratory signs and symptoms due to vaping. So sometimes the patient is not having a condition related to vaping disorders. The patients just have respiratory signs and symptoms like uh, cough, shortness of breath, etc. These should not be coded separately. Because the patient is already having a disorder, U07.0 is coded, which is vaping related disorder. So all these symptoms are included in the disorder. So you will not be coding separately those symptoms, example, cough, shortness of breath, chest tightness, all those things should not be coded separately as U0.0 includes everything. However, it would be appropriate to code separately any gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea and abdominal pain. So any other unrelated symptoms you will be coding separately. Only the respiratory related signs and symptoms will be included in U07.0. That's what they are telling it. So that is all about the chapter specific coding guidelines, chapter 10, diseases of the respiratory system J00 to J99 and U07.0. So these are the important guidelines you should be taking note of when coding this respiratory system ICD-10 CM. Hope this uh, video is clear. If you have doubt, please ask me in the comment section below or you can very well email me or Instagram me. Try my level best to answer all your queries and doubts at the earliest possible. If you are interested in that anatomy PDF that I was talking about earlier, you can very well email me to this email address or you can Instagram me to Instagram ID. I'll respond to you with all the details. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so you'll not miss any of my medical coding related video. If you found this video to be useful, please hit like and share with the other, other medical coding friends so it will be useful to them as it was useful to you as well. See you in the next guideline. This is Surya Johnson, your medical coding guide.